According to the CDC, 1 in 31 hospital patients has at least one healthcare-associated infection. These infections can be a huge threat to not only patients, but healthcare facilities and their employees. They can also cause long-term hospital stays, disabilities, and unnecessary deaths. In my last video, we went over a few programs that are necessary to enforce a good infection prevention and control plan. We talked about surveillance, isolation, and outbreak investigation and management. Let's take a look at the rest of the programs that can help you keep your patients, employees, and business safe. Hi everyone, I'm Maria from eTactics, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about why infection control is important to healthcare workers, part two. Before we get started, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button below. Also, hit that alert bell icon so that when we post new, helpful content, you get notified. Let's go over what infection control is, in case you missed the last video. Infection Prevention and Control, or IPC, refers to the policies and procedures that help control the spread of healthcare-associated infections, or HAIs. In our last video, we addressed the use of surveillance programs, isolation tactics, and outbreak investigation and management. These combined with the following programs are all necessary to create a strong IPC. So let's talk about education, employee health, and environmental hygiene. Education and training on a regular basis are important when it comes to making sure employees actually retain information on infection control policies and procedures. Making sure to reinforce employees' knowledge is the first line of defense. Annual online training is a convenient route that can help keep employees up to date on procedures. Employee health services must work with the infection control program to ensure a safe work environment for healthcare employees. Both of these teams must address certain topics, which should range from exposure management to specific infections. All new employees should also undergo a screening to ensure they are up to date with vaccinations. Additionally, existing employees should continue to stay up to date with annual influenza vaccinations. Regularly testing for latent tuberculosis is another way hospitals offer preventative health solutions. This final program is probably one of the more obvious ones. Environmental hygiene. With the inpatient population more susceptible to infection, making sure to keep the facility clean is crucial. However, cleaning and disinfection of environmental surfaces in a medical setting is not as obvious of a task as you may think. For example, make sure to use a proper cleaner before disinfection. This initial cleaning removes organic matter, salts, and visible soils. The physical act of scrubbing with soap and water removes a large amount of microorganisms on surfaces. Environmental hygiene plans require the collaboration of several different types of professionals, including hospital engineers, federal agencies, architects, public health professionals, and medical professionals. Many of these HAIs are due to pathogens that are outsmarting antimicrobial medications. These medications include antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitics. These medicines can treat HAIs, but the overuse or misuse of them can cause the disease to evolve rapidly into a more dangerous infection altogether. That's why it's important to not only rely on medication to control disease, but also install programs like the ones I've mentioned in this video. Prevention is the best medicine. If you'd like to learn more about infection control, reach out to eTactics. And you already made it this far into the video, so you might as well like it, share it, and comment below.